OpenAI just released a new agentic framework, a new competitor to players like Autogen, QAI, and other agent swarms. In this video, we are going to cover all the details regarding this publication by the OpenAI team. And at the end, I'm going to share with you a few of my takeaways from this new um, open source tool. Let's get, dive directly in. First of all, let's read the blog post that was published by OpenAI. So this is available in the OpenAI cookbook. If you're not familiar with the OpenAI blog post and research papers and cookbook, I highly recommend that you check it out every once in a while because they publish very interesting insights, uh, research and stuff that is just very interesting and highly relevant for people that are in the AI space. Let's start by covering the blog very fast, understanding some concepts, and then we will make comparisons between this framework to the leading frameworks which are available at the moment, which are, in my opinion, Autogen and QAI. And the long chain, obviously. So first of all, this is quite obvious, but they say that we, they are introducing the notion of routines and handoffs. Um, and obviously a swarm, which you probably are familiar with the concept of swarm, agentic AIs um, coordinate to operate in a swarm, swarm of, open, of uh, agents. They share the code. We will go over the code later. Let's just get going, read what they say about routines. So the notion of a routine is not strictly defined and instead meant to capture the idea of a set of steps. A routine is just a set of instructions that you give for an agent. Let's take a look at the example below. They have defined a routine for customer service agent, instructing it to triage the user issue, then either suggest a fix or provide a refund. And they have also defined the necessary functions such as execute refund and lookup item. So this is the system message. By the way, it's very important when OpenAI or Anthropic or any other um, popular repository or, or company publish a system message or the code, I all, always make it a point to read exactly how they structured the prompts. If they use JSONs or XMLs or, or just natural language like this. So let's read the, the system message. First of all, setting the role, which is very important when prompting. You are a customer support agent for Acme Inc. Always answer in a sentence or less. Follow the following routine with the user. One, first ask probing questions and understand the user problem deeper. Start a new line. Unless the user has already provided a reason, propose a fix, makes one, make one up. And only if not satisfied, offer a refund if accepted search for the ID and then execute the refund. So in my opinion, not the greatest system message. I've seen way, way, way uh, better system messages. Now they are defining tools. If you guys don't know what are tools, tools are basically functions that uh, agents can call. So in this instance, this is a function which looks up for a specific item. As you can see here, use uh, to find item ID. If a, if a customer approach the support agent, the customer support agent with a, a query. Basically, this tool is going to find the specific uh, item ID. Search query can be description or keywords, and it returns the item number. Another tool that was created for this agent is the execute refund tool. Now, the main power of routines is their simplicity and robustness. Notice that these instructions contain conditionals, much like a state machine or branching in code. So. As you can see here, they have uh, conditionals. LLMs can actually handle these cases quite robustly for small and medium sized routines with the added benefit of having soft adherence. The LLM can naturally steer the conversation without getting stuck in dead ends. So executing a routine, to execute a routine, let's implement a simple loop. So it, the loop gets the user input, appends user message to the messages, calls the models, and appends the model to response. Let's just move forward because I don't think there's anything important right here. Moving forward, this is the function calling. Now they show how the, the model is calling a tool. 
I don't find this important as well. Now moving forward to the next concept, which is a handoff. Dynamically swapping system instructions and tool may seem daunting. However, if we view routines as agent, then this notion of handoffs allow us to represent these swaps simply as one agent handing off a conversation to another. Now the definition of a handoff as an agent or routine handing off an active conversation to another agent, much like wh when you get transferred to someone else on a phone call. Except in this case, the agents have complete knowledge of your previous conversation. To see handoffs in action, this is the code for a handoff. So imagine that you're speaking with the customer support rep as a user, and this is an agent, and the agent doesn't know how to provide the answer. Um, he, for example, he doesn't know how to provide the refund. So he can make a handoff to a different agent which specializes in providing refunds. And in when you define the agents, and we will cover this later, you can define exactly which agents can hand off what type of conversation to other agents. So in the case, in the example that I made up, the customer support agent is defined, you, you define him the ability to hand off the conversation to the, to the refund providing agent. Okay, so not sure if you want to read the code. Let's see that I didn't forget anything. Okay, now that the agent can express the intent to make a handoff, we must uh, make it actually happen. There's, there are many ways to do this, but there's one particularly clean way. For the agent functions we defined so far, like execute refund or place order, they return a string which will be provided to the model. What if instead we return an agent or uh, let's see. So this is just how the handoff looks like. Nothing, nothing too interesting to be honest. Let's move on to a few examples. So this is the repo, the, the repository. You can find it in OpenAI Swarm. I will leave the link in the description. And they have provided a few examples. Um, one is a personal shopper, one is a support bot, one is a customer service. They also provide here how exactly to install the repository. Let's see if there's anything else. I don't recall anything too interesting here. This is just a, a visual representation of how exactly it works. Again, I'm, I'm operating under the assumption that you're aware of the concept of agents. So I'm not going to go too deep or give too much background about agents. The most important things I would check out is the examples. So different examples. And to be honest, the main thing that caught my attention was the evaluation. So an evaluation is basically um, a tool or an agent evaluation is another layer that you add to the agentic framework that evaluates the output. Now, Autogen, which is a Microsoft uh, solution, which is a genetic framework provided by Microsoft team, they break down. They also have something that is called agent evaluation, which is a, a, a benchmark that they made up in order to evaluate agents. But they also have um, a, a flow that they follow in which for every task, they create, first of all, they have something that they call agent critique, which basically thinks of parameters to evaluate the task, the agent, and then they forward these parameters to another agent. He gets the output from the first agent and he gives scores to the output. And then they even have like another layer of validation. Now, let me, I know this might have not be so clear. So let's imagine that we have a customer support agent. The first step is we want to come up with ideas of how we can evaluate the customer support rep. So we send the description of the customer support rep agent to the agent critique. And he says, okay, in order to evaluate uh, a customer support agent, we first of all, we want to see how kind he is, um, his ability to um, provide the relevant solution to the customer. Uh, what else can we assess when providing uh, customer support? A speed 
to answer and spin to resolution. So let's say we decided these are the three parameters. The agent critique is forwarding these parameters to another agent. This agent is going to read the conversation between the first agent, the customer support agent, and the customer, and he is going to assess based on the parameters that were provided by the agent critique. Okay, it seems like the response were kind. It seems uh, like he understood the agent query, so let's give it an eight on the uh, scale of one to 10. And the speed for resolution was very slow, so let's give it a two. And after he provides the score, we can forward this um, score to the verification level, which is another agent which decides whether or not we want to publish this conversation or like, or do another iteration. Obviously, this is more relevant if you want to have like many layers and you have an stuff that is at risk, for example, a reputational risk of the company or it's very important. So you can just add layers of evaluations. Anyway, long story short, this, this is how I think um, evaluating agentic frameworks should be done. Here we have a different uh, alternative or solution by OpenAI, which is basically they built a very simple evaluation agent. And I just wanted to share with you um, the system prompt. So you will be provided with a conversation between a user and an agent, as well as the main goal for the conversation. Your goal is to evaluate based on the conversation if the agent achieves the main goal or not. To assess whether the agent manages to achieve this, the, goal, the main goal, consider the instructions pre present in the main goal, as well as the way the user responds. Is the user uh, answer satisfactory for the user? Is the answer satisfactory for the user or not? Could the agent have done better considering the main goal? It, it is possible that the user is not satisfied with the answer, but the agent still achieves the main goal because it is the following, uh, it is following the instructions provided as part of the main goal. Now over here, they just create a Boolean with true or false, which basically say, says if we achieve the goal or not. Uh, this is an example of uh, the evaluations that they are using. I'm not a big fan but I, I just wanted to share with you guys this uh, example and the whole concept of evaluations. I think I will start summarizing this video. To be honest, um, when I first saw the, this repository, which was published not too long ago, and the blog post, I had very high expectations, but um, I don't feel that there is anything new under the sun in terms of agentic frameworks in this specific repository, I feel like uh, Crew AI and Autogen, which are more developed uh, uh, at the moment, way more interesting. Uh, Autogen has um, a lot of features. I'm not sure you got it Crew AI because I haven't checked out the repository lately, but for example, Autogen has the ability to hand off between different agents. So you can use Graph API to hand off between different agents. You have besides the agent system prompt, you also have an agent description, which allows other agents to understand the capabilities of each uh, agent. You have an uh, ability to add memory, which uh, you don't have here. Um, tool calling we have here. Um, the evaluation library that I mentioned. Yeah, so I guess long story short, it's very interesting to see that OpenAI have published this thing. Um, it means that they are aware of what's happening in the agentic world, obviously. <laughs> but um, this feels a, a bit early. Definitely makes sense to keep on, you know, seeing how this evolves. Uh, I was quite surprised that they published some uh, this thing, which has no meaningful examples and looks very, you know, raw. But we'll see if they keep evolving this and developing this and, and catch up on other rejecting frameworks. So that's it for today, guys. I just want to share with you uh, this because, I, you know, anything that is related to agents is important these days, especially for me and hopefully for the viewers of the channel. If you have any suggestions, like always, if you have any suggestions, uh, leave them in the comment section below. Until next time, keep on automating.